If you're looking for a way to maximize your online privacy, you might have ended up using Tails OS. Now, Tails is pretty effective at preserving your privacy since it routes all of your traffic through Tor and it doesn't retain any of your usage data, at least not outside of a persistence folder if you decide to set one up. But Tails could have better security. You see, if someone manages to get root access to your device, they can easily disable the IP shielding that Tor grants you and figure out your real location. And if you get doxxed by the feds or a dark web hacker man, you're going to have a bad time. This is where Cubes OS comes in. Cubes is described as a reasonably secure OS, and this security comes from virtualized compartmentalization. You see, in Cubes OS, all of your work, and more importantly, every connection to the internet, is done inside of a virtual machine, or cube, as they're typically called. So if we look back at the attack that compromised a Tails OS user, this kind of attack would only have compromised the cube that actually ran the malicious payload. But the true IP address of the host machine, or any other cubes for that matter, would not have been revealed unless the threat actor was also able to escape the VM. And in the security world, VM escapes are thankfully rare and pretty difficult to pull off. Cubes OS ships with Hunix VMs, and just like Tails, these Hunix cubes erase all of the user's data on reboot, and they route all of your traffic through Tor. But the Hunix workstation doesn't actually connect to Tor directly. All of its traffic goes through a separate VM called the Hunix gateway, which the end user doesn't interact with at all. It just sits in the background acting as, well, a gateway that routes all of the workstation's traffic through the Tor network. So if your Hunix workstation were to get compromised, the attacker would need to escape that VM, get to the gateway, and compromise that machine as well to reveal your true IP address. Now, Hunix is an entirely separate project from Cubes, and most of the time it's actually used with the KVM hypervisor. But Cubes OS uses the Zen hypervisor to manage all of its VMs. The Cubes developers chose Zen because it allows the host OS, which is called DOM0, to be orders of magnitude smaller than your typical KVM host. Because a KVM host will, at the very least, include a complete Linux kernel, which weighs in at over 28 million lines of code, and it only gets more bloated from there if your KVM host has a desktop environment and other drivers and applications that are installed to it. And a KVM host will typically connect to the internet and be used by the end user directly, which puts all of the guest OSs that are running under it in jeopardy. The DOM0 in Cubes, however, is only a few hundred thousand lines of trusted code it also doesn't make any direct connections to the internet, which means it's a lot harder for a bug in that smaller code base to be exploited and result in a compromise of the entire operating system. Because if you can pwn the host, all of the VMs running under it become easy pickings. Another benefit of Cubes over Tails OS or standalone Hunix is that it's not only restricted to connecting to the internet over Tor. There's another pre-built VM that ships with cubes called Personal, which uses a Debian or Fedora template, and this lets you do your own normal everyday browsing. It doesn't erase all your usage history when you shut it down, and this cube, along with all of the other ones, are color-coded so that you can tell which is which. The Hunix cubes have red windows and your personal cube has a yellow window. So this is gonna prevent you from mixing up your dark web activity and your clear web activity and switching to dark web browsing is as simple as launching the Hunix cubes. You don't have to reboot or shut down your personal cube. Everything is kept completely separate. And this virtualized separation actually goes further than just different OSs for different purposes. There's service cubes for your system's network, firewall, and USB resources. 
You can also create your own service cubes or custom workstation templates, like if you wanted to use an Arch Linux-based cubes that only connected to Mulvad VPN, you could easily set that up in the Cubes OS management system. Now, since peripherals and networking are handled by dedicated service cubes, this means that none of your workstation cubes actually have direct USB or network access. They have to connect to the Sys USB service cube and the Sys firewall cube, which connects to the Sys net cube in order to access those resources. This hardens the system further and DOM0, of course, doesn't connect to those service cubes because it doesn't need to have direct network access. And another VM that ships with cubes, which has similar restrictions, is the Vault Cube. As the name implies, the Vault Cube is where you want to store your most sensitive data, like your passwords, private keys, and things like that. It has no network or USB access, so your system would need to be fully compromised for the files in that vault to be accessed or deleted. So this gives you maximum protection for your digital secrets. The only more secure method I could think of would be to have a separate air gap device to keep all of those secrets on, but obviously convenience drops dramatically with that approach since in Cubes OS, there's an intercube clipboard that can be used to copy passwords over from your Vault Cubes password manager into a login form that's in your Hunix or your personal cube. Now, there is one security feature that Tails OS has over Cubes, which I call the panic option. You see, Tails is a live system that runs off of a USB drive, and if that drive were to get removed from the computer while it's running, Tails automatically shuts down and the data is unrecoverable without the encryption key for your Tails USB drive. A lot of flash drives also have a notch in them for attaching a lanyard or a keychain, and you could use that with your Tails OS flash drive to create a cheap and simple dead man switch. Simply connect the other end of your lanyard to your wrist or your belt loop, and if you get tackled out of your chair or someone grabs your laptop and runs away with it, the flash drive gets yanked out and Tails OS will shut down. Now, of course, you could create a keyboard shortcut in Cubes OS to do a similar kind of emergency shutdown, but in a high stress moment of a police raid or armed robbers kicking in your door, you might forget your keyboard shortcut and not use it fast enough. Not to mention the keyboard shortcut has to be complex or unique enough to not get invoked accidentally, and this just makes using it in a panic situation all the more difficult. Luckily, there's Buskill, which gives you that physical dead man switch functionality in any operating system, including cubes. This is actually better than the lanyard on a Tails USB because Buskill is a magnetic breakaway dead man switch that uses a USB connection. When the magnet is disconnected from the machine, it powers off, or you can even configure Buskill to destroy all of the data that's saved on the PC. So if an attacker captures and tortures you, there's no way that anyone will ever be able to recover the data that's on that machine, regardless of where they connect their jumper cables to you. Buskill's code and designs are open source and available on GitHub, and when you combine it with Cubes OS, you get a damn good browsing setup for the ultra-paranoid.